My name is Georgine and I'm a nutrition scientist at the British Nutrition Foundation. Today, to conclude Healthy Eating Week, we're going to have a look at health for life and ways to achieve this as well. So we are now come to the last day of Healthy Eating Week. Hope you have been celebrating the occasion with lots of activities to look at healthy eating, where food comes from and how food is prepared as well. What are you most proud of? and what do you think you could do better? To kick start on the topic health for life, we need to think about why it is important to be healthy. Well, being healthy helps to keep us strong, as well as to stay away from being ill. But how can we do this? Well, there are two main things which are important for health, eating and drinking well, and being active. According to the National Pupil Survey by the British Nutrition Foundation, most pupils in the UK feel that they know lots about healthy eating, but do not always follow it. What do you do to eat healthily? Do you eat well? Are you active every day? To help us make healthier choices, the government has produced eight tips for healthy eating. Raise your hands if you've heard of these before. So these tips complement on the healthy eating messages from the Eat Well plate which is the UK's healthy eating model. And hopefully most of you, if not all of you, have seen it before. The Eat Well Plate is the UK's healthy eating guide, which sets up the types and proportions of foods which make up a healthy, varied diet. It is divided into five food groups. One third of the plate is made up of bread, rice, potatoes, pasta, and other starchy foods. The other third from fruit and vegetables and the remaining third is made up of foods from milk and dairy foods, meat, fish, eggs, beans, and other non-dairy sources of protein, and foods and drinks high in fat and not sugar. We are recommended to follow the Eat Well plate to choose a variety of different foods from the four biggest groups. So to kickstart the eight tips for eating well, let's have a look at the first tip, which is base your meals and starchy foods. So what are starchy foods? Some of the examples represented by this group include bread, rice, potatoes, pasta, breakfast cereals, noodles, couscous, yam, cassava. Well, you can see that these are some common foods that we tend to eat every day. And hopefully you are including these foods at every meal. The reason is because these foods provide energy as well as dietary fibre, some minerals such as calcium and iron, and B vitamins to keep us healthy. Choosing whole grain varieties whenever possible also gives us the extra fiber, which is important to add bulk to the diet and keeps our gut healthy. There are plenty of options available, so try to choose different types to keep it interesting. Next, we're looking at eating lots of fruit and veg. How many of you eat five a day or try to eat five a day? Please raise your hand. And of course, it's very important to eat lots of fruit and vegetables. However, most people in the UK are not eating enough. We should be eating at least five portions each day. And that's because these foods, fruit and vegetables, provide vitamins and minerals for the body to function properly. Got a true or false question for you. Only fresh fruit and vegetables count towards five a day. Do you think it's true or do you think it's false? The answer is false. Frozen, dried, canned and juiced ones all count. So it's important to try different types of fruit and vegetables to get your five a day. Next, we're going to look at eating more fish. Do you include some fish each week? The government recommendation is to eat at least two portions of fish each week, one of which should be oily. So a portion of cooked fish is 140 grams, around the size of a salmon fillet. So it's actually important to try to include some fish per week and include oily types if possible as well. The main reason is because fish is a good source of protein and provides many vitamins and minerals that the body needs. White fish is low in fat, while oily fish is rich in the long chain omega-3 fatty acids, important to keep our hearts healthy. And this is done by reducing blood cholesterol levels. Some examples of white fish include cod, haddock and halibut. Some examples of oily fish include salmon, 
fresh tuna and trout. I've got another true or false question for you. True or false, can tuna is an oily fish. What do you think? I must say this is a tricky question. Well, the answer is false. The fact is, during the canning process, the amount of long-chain omega-3 fatty acids in tuna is reduced to levels similar to white fish. So canned tuna is actually considered as a white fish. Going easy and cutting down on saturated fat and sugar. The main reason for this tip is because eating too much saturated fat can increase blood cholesterol levels in our body and the chance of developing heart disease. Having too many foods which contain high amounts of sugar consumed between meals is linked with an increased tendency towards tooth decay, particularly when good dental hygiene is not practiced. And that's the main reason for this tip to cut down on saturated fat and sugar. So foods which contain high amounts of saturated fat include fatty cuts of meat and sausages, butter, cakes and pastries, and examples of foods which are high in sugar include sweets and confectionery, cakes and drinks added with sugar. So you can see that these foods are tend to be the more tastier options that we try, sometimes we go for. The main message is we can eat some of these but try to cut down uh, because most of the people are actually having too many foods high in saturated fat and sugar in the UK. So the main key message is to try to compare food labels to choose foods which are lower in saturated fat and sugar. And when having foods and drinks high in sugar, try to include them as part of the meal to reduce their impact on dental decay. Going on to the next tip is eating less salt. I've got a question for you here. How much salt do you think we should eat each day? A no more than 6 grams, B, no more than 8 grams, or C, no more than 10 grams? The answer is no more than 6 grams. Adults and teenagers should eat no more than 6 grams of salt each day, and children under 11 years old need even less salt than that. And this is because young children's developing kidneys cannot cope with the extra amount of salt. And that's why we should try to eat as little salt as possible. And that's also because most of the people in the UK are eating too much. Eating less salt can help us to maintain a normal blood pressure, which is important for health. Having too much salt in the diet may raise blood pressure levels and lead to stroke and heart disease. Most of the salt in the UK that we eat comes from food that we buy readily prepared such as from bread and cereal products, meat products and some ready meals. So it is very important that we try to compare labels when buying foods to select foods which are lower salt options to try to eat less salt. Going on to the next tip, get active and be a healthy weight. It is very important that we try to be a healthy weight. This can be achieved and maintained through being active to use up the energy from food and drinks. If we take in more energy from food and drinks than what we use up, we may put on weight in the long run. Having too much extra weight may lead to overweight and obesity, which eventually increase the risk of certain health outcomes, such as having a higher risk for type 2 diabetes, some cancers, heart disease and stroke. It's very important that we have a look at this because one in four adults in the UK is obese actually, so it's very important that we try to maintain a healthy weight. If we use up more energy from food and drinks than what we use up, we may lose weight in the long run. Losing a lot of weight in the long run may lead to underweight, which can also affect our health. So it's very important to be of a healthy weight, not to be overweight or underweight. So how much activity do we need to do to help us achieve and maintain a healthy weight? Well, for children and young people, they are recommended to do at least 60 minutes of moderate intensity activity every single day. This means activity that will make you breathe harder, make your heart beat faster, and make you feel warmer and sweat as well. It seems like a long period of time to do this every day. However, short bouts of activity all count 
and add up to the daily activity recommendation. And you can choose different types of activity, for example, living actively, doing lots of household chores around, uh, around your home, doing lots of walking, helping with the gardening, and using the stairs even, they all count. Active recreation, so going for some skating, cycling, and dancing with your friends, and of course, organized sport. The good thing about this is everything counts, so even 10 minutes here and there all adds up to your activity output every single day. And we're very pleased to see that during Healthy Eating Week, a lot of schools have actually sent in entries on how they can incorporate activity during school time at home to celebrate Healthy Eating Week. And we hope that this will continue throughout the rest of the summer and in the next school year to come as well. The most important message about getting active is try to sit less and move more. Going on to the next one is don't get thirsty. Two thirds of our body is made up of water and we lose water constantly throughout the day through sweating and going to the toilet. It's very important that we try to keep well hydrated throughout the day by replacing water loss to keep our body function properly. We are recommended to drink around six to eight glasses each day, but this should be more when the weather is hot like today on a hot summer's day and when we've been active as well because we lose more water through sweating. It is important to drink throughout the day and try not to get thirsty. Even a small loss of water in our body can lead to problems such as headaches and the loss of concentration and affect performance in school and at work. Last but not least, we have don't skip breakfast. Could you raise your hands if you had breakfast this morning, please? It is important that we have breakfast every day. This is because when we sleep, our body still uses fuels from foods to keep us breathing and our heart beating. So keeping us alive, basically. By the time we wake up, we need, we'll need to get energy from food and drink to stock up our energy stores. Therefore, it is important to have healthy breakfast to get the energy and nutrients we need throughout the morning. Breakfast can also help to increase concentration throughout the day as well. So it's very important that we don't skip breakfast. If we skip it, it is likely that we will fill up on snacks which are high in fat and sugar if we get hungry before lunch. And the fact is there are many different breakfast options. If we are short for time, we can always get something easy to grab and go or even to prepare your breakfast the night before so that you can have something ready to go for school to have something to eat or drink, which is very important. So think about your favorite breakfast and also to try to inspire children to have breakfast every day. I hope they're having, uh, most of them are having breakfast every day because a national pupil survey has shown that actually 6% of primary pupils and around 22% of secondary students do not have breakfast every day, which is quite alarming. So it's very important that we promote this message throughout school. So to recap the eight tips, we have looked at ways to base our meals on starchy foods, having lots of fruit and veg and more fish in the diet, cutting down on saturated fat and sugar, eating less salt, getting active and being a healthy weight, drinking panty and not to skip breakfast as well. A good way of encouraging students to think about this set of tips is to try to make a pledge and also maybe to use this target tracker which we've developed for Healthy Eating Week but you can still download this from our website afterwards to inspire children and pupils in school to think about the key eating messages like eating five a day, eating breakfast every day, drinking six to eight glasses of fluid each day and being active for an hour each day as well. Quite a useful way of thinking about how to do this during the week in school as well as bringing the healthy eating and activity messages home to encourage friends and family to do so as well. We hope you enjoy this e-seminar. Thanks very much Georgine for presenting today. I was just wondering, do the eight tips for healthy eating apply to school children? Yes, they do. The eight tips for eating well, they are all applicable to school children and for the rest of the population as well. So it's very important that we try to do it every day and uh, try to think of ways to make their diet and activity ideas interesting and 
realistic as well. Thanks, Georgine. What should children eat for breakfast? Well, for breakfast time, for children, all the healthy eating tips apply as well. So it's very useful to think about the Eat Well plate on how to incorporate the healthy eating tips at breakfast. So try to include a starchy foods to start with, which is very important. At breakfast time, you can have breakfast cereals, a slice of toast, porridge, or even different things like rice, for example, thinking about kedgeri. And then on top of that, you would think about incorporating lots of fruit and vegetables because breakfast is a very good way to start um, to achieve your five a day. And then think about milk and dairy foods as well and including some protein foods. So for example, having a glass of milk or having some grated cheese on your breakfast omelette, um, lots of different ideas out there, even including some fish to help you achieve the two a week recommendation, like having smoked salmon on bagel, or even um, haddock, having haddock as part of your kedgeri, yeah, using that example again. And just try to go easy on the fat and sugar. So it's very important that we try to think about the eat well tips. As for snacks then, it's perfectly fine to snack because a lot of people think it's wrong to snack, completely fine to snack. And um, also again, think about the eat well plate and what healthier snacks you can go for. A quick way to, is to have something from the fruit and vegetables group with you, like fresh fruit, some dried fruit, having a fruit bowl on your desk or in your bag to get you going. And if you've got time, maybe you can make a small bowl of soup with some crackers on the side with a thin layer of cream cheese on top will be a good option as well, some dips and dippers. And uh, even a glass of fruit smoothie will probably get you going as well. So there are plenty of options out there, but do think about the healthy options as well as the portion sizes so that the snack will not overtake main meal as well. And it's very important to include a drink as we've looked at because a lot of people when they eat, sometimes they forget about the drink. So it's important that we try to keep hydrated throughout the day by having a drink with the main meal and when you're snacking and throughout the day as well. Don't wait till you get thirsty because usually when people are thirsty, um, the body is already dehydrated around one to two percent. So it's very important that we try to drink plenty and avoid being thirsty. And hence the healthy eating tip, don't get thirsty. Well, that's a very good question. Are energy drinks good for children? They might not be the most appropriate drinks for children. Um, energy drinks, sometimes they can be high in sugar and also some other um, substances are added to these drinks as well. For example, caffeine might not be appropriate for children. So for children, we would recommend having water, which is always a very good choice. Milk, fruit juice and fruit smoothies are equally excellent choices because they provide, apart from water, some added nutrients as well, like for milk, calcium, fruit juice and fruit smoothie, um, some vitamins as well. So those options might be better and more appropriate for children. Okay, we've got another question here. What is the latest time that we should have for dinner? Well, there isn't a recommendation about the amount, the, the time exactly that we should have dinner because everyone's body works differently. However, if we have dinner a bit earlier and allow some time for us to digest before we go to bed, it will probably make us more comfortable because going to bed on a full stomach sometimes is not the best thing. So really, it's, um, I would say personally, maybe around two to three hours before bedtime would be the latest time that we have dinner. And of course, there will be other factors affecting the time for dinner. For example, um, waiting for mom and dad to come home, um, the amount of time to get dinner prepared, etc. So these are all other factors apart from um, the health factor as well. So we need to think about it. 